Hello, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and all that sort of stuff. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Some of you were here very early. I appreciate that. <clears throat> um, Stacy, hi. Ochan, Mario, you mean no. Oh. Welcome. Hello, Fab is in Fab, but yes. Hello, Naoko Mie. Thanks for joining. All the usual suspects are here. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, happy Monday. Today is a national holiday here in the U.S. It's Memorial Day. It's the day that we show respect to the fallen soldiers. Someday we won't have any fallen soldiers because we will stop having wars. That would be nice. But anyway, even though it's a national holiday, I'm here partying with you. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Hello, Diego. Hey, thanks for coming today. Um, today, <coughs> are you talking to us at your natural speed? Yes, most probably. Hello, Lolly Lolly. Hey, Tefo. Um, yeah. I think so. This is my natural speed. People tell me that I speak too fast um, in an English lesson. Hello, Liliana. Buongiorno from Italy. Um, but yeah, this is basically my natural speed. I might um, speak a little quicker when I'm talking to my friends, but yeah. Some English teachers talk like this. Hello, students. Today, we're going... I don't like to do that because that's not real. And that does not help you. If you're a complete beginner, it might help you if somebody speaks like this. But um, I don't want to... You guys are... You guys are adults, I'm going to guess, and I don't want to treat you like children. So that's why. Um, anyway, since it's Monday and uh, many people are off on the weekend, I don't know your schedule, but how about you? Did you, um, did you learn anything new over the weekend? Did you study anything new over the weekend? Max, how about you? Did you study anything over the weekend? Did you learn any new... Hello from Cuba. Welcome. Uh, did you learn any new vocabulary this weekend? Did you study grammar? Did you learn any idioms or phrasal verbs? What did you learn this weekend? Ochan, you're here. Welcome. <laughs> what did you study over the weekend? Tell us. Share something in a sentence. If you learned new vocabulary... Or, oh, I don't know, um, something like that. Turn on a dime. What does that mean when you turn on a dime? Turn on a dime. It means very accurate turning. I learned some synonyms. Okay, good. I learned the word todo. Todo. Todo is a stone lantern that you can sometimes see in a Japanese garden. That's what I learned this weekend. Um, a friend of mine in Japan redid their garden. And there was a todo. I hope that's the correct pronunciation. A stone lantern. Um, it's always good to take something um, and put it in a sentence. One of my clients is easygoing, but dead from the neck up. I love that idiom. So I think that my neighbor, my neighbor is dead from the, ne from the neck up. That's for sure. A fond memory. I always have fond memories from this class. Um, today, we're going to talk about, um, I just put together some vocabulary that I, a lot of people ask me all the time about this vocabulary. And I thought, you know what, this is confusing for a lot of learners. Um, so we're going to go over that. 
I hung out with my friends instead of studying English last weekend. That's okay. Sometimes you need a break. Mosquitoes get under my skin because it's getting hotter here. The weather is the weather here is really perfect. It's about 25 degrees. It's going to be 31 or 32 Celsius tomorrow. Um, but it's warm, but it's not humid yet. So, you know, thank goodness. Nice weather. The, my garden is starting to grow. So everything's good. I'm with you guys. That's that's awesome. All right. So, uh, Tammy, hi, good morning. All right. We're going to talk about some confusing words in no particular order. If what I show you now, um, get a lot of mileage out of something. That's right. You use it for a long time. Um, if what I'm going to show you now causes you to think of a question or something comes up, let me know in the comments, okay? Um, this is your lesson as much as it is me being here. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Look forward to and looking forward to. I get this question all the time. Now, um, Vitaly, hi. If you, if you, uh, if this is your first time, look forward to means something is coming up in the future and you're thinking about that and you have happy thoughts and you feel good. Yay! This thing is coming up, right? So, happily anticipating um, something. Do you say better than me or better than I am? I think we would use both, Tammy. So, there's a difference between uh, the look forward to in the present and looking forward to in the present continuous. So, um, what's your habit, right? I play table tennis, said somebody famous. I, I work on the weekend, okay? I drink beer. We use the simple present, <clears throat> pardon me, <laughs> don't spit. We use the simple present when we talk about a usual situation. I'm Michael. I live in New York. I teach English. Simple present for the usual situation, right? So, I always look forward to the weekend. I always look forward to the weekend. Simple present. Because the weekend comes all the time. It's a usual situation. We look forward to taking our English class on Mondays on YouTube. Don't we? I do. Okay? We have a regular class. So if you have something every week, every month, and you're excited about that, and you can't wait to do that, and it comes every month, every week, every day, you can say, look forward to using the present tense. So, my question to you is, what do you look forward to? I look forward to attending this class every Monday. Thank you. I always look forward to your YouTube lessons on Mondays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to chatting with you here on YouTube every week. It's a habit. By the way, if you've just joined, I've been doing this every Monday since December, blah, 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 the first week, the first Monday of December. And uh, if you'd like to get a copy of this document, you can download it for free. All you have to do is go to myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube. I will put that. My happy, whoa, why am I typing in Japanese? Oh my God. My happy English dot com slash Y O U T U B E. There. Uh, but don't do that now because then you're going to miss this. 
But if you go to myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube, you can uh, download this document plus the document for every English lesson here on YouTube. All right. Uh, also, when this lesson is over, you can watch this on YouTube and you can down below there's a link. All right. You might see a link now. I don't know what device you're looking on. I can't see that, but maybe you can. Um, I look forward to taking a lesson here every Monday. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Taking a lesson every Monday here. Thank you. I'm looking forward to singing on the stage for the Cherry Blossom Festival. All right. Okay. That's the, that's the next one, you know, you're ahead of me. I look forward to passing my vacation in Italy. Okay. Is that your habit? Hmm? So, when the event is not a usual, not regular, not a habit, not a habitual occurrence, we use the progressive form. You can think about, you can think about, um, uh, be looking forward to for one-time events. I'm looking forward to the party. There's a party on Saturday. It's one event. I'm looking forward to that. It's one event. Jane said she's looking forward to going to Paris next week. It's a vacation. It's not a usual trip. She's looking forward to going to Paris. Okay. How about you? Anything that you're looking forward to? Some one-time event? Yumino said, I'm looking forward to singing on the stage for the Cherry Blossom Festival. What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to someday in the future when the pandemic is over and I can travel. <laughs> That's what I'm looking forward to. But how about you? What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to spending some time in my garden uh, before the mosquitoes and the hot, humid weather comes. I'm looking forward to taking some time off next month. Good. I'm looking forward to my wedding. Congratulations. Right. Now, looking forward to. I'm looking forward to meeting my biker's friends next Thursday in Tuscany. Annual meeting. Excellent. I'm looking forward to buying something special in the north part of Ontario this weekend. Nice. I'm looking forward to attending my friend's wedding. Ochan, looking forward to attending. The, the grammar is look forward to or looking forward to a noun or a gerund, an ing. I'm looking forward to buying something special. I'm looking forward to attending my friend's wedding. Oh, but Michael, they taught us in school that it's two plus a base verb. That's right. They told you that in school. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, they did. But this is what they didn't tell you. This is what they didn't tell you, and I'm here to tell it to you. Sorry. This is really important. It doesn't matter which one you use. Hey, buddy. Huh? 
Okay, sorry for that little typing delay of silence. <clears throat> Usually, it goes to followed by a base verb. Sorry, that was the dog. Usually it goes to plus a base verb, right? I like to swim. I like to talk to you. I like to eat pizza. I like to cook. But look forward to is a set phrase, and it's followed by a noun or a gerund. That's the I-N-G. I look forward to seeing you, not I look forward to see you. I look forward to going to the party. Or I'm looking forward to going to the party. Not I'm looking forward to go to the party. Okay? That's an important point. Um, I'm looking forward to traveling around the world. Lolly, 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 lolly. Tefo says I'm looking forward to going to London. I'm looking forward to beating strong players one day. Good. I look forward to resting after a laboring day. I'm looking forward to a language exchange meetup this Wednesday. Good. Ochan, your last mistake is your best teacher. I'm looking forward to seeing many people at the ceremony memorial service this morning. Good. I'm looking forward to going to a concert with my friend on Saturday. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to going to my friend's birthday tomorrow. Lolly, lolly, lolly. It's a one-time event if it's ING. Now, Toshi, hi. A holiday tomorrow? Excellent. Lucky you. So, so, it is possible, and thanks to uh, now go da, 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 for reminding me this morning, to use the present tense for a one-time event. But, it's very formal. It's very formal. And I don't know what situation we would use that in. Maybe in the business world, if you have a new client and you've scheduled a meeting with that new client, you can say, well, Mr. Smith, I really look forward to our meeting tomorrow, or I look forward to seeing you at the conference next week, or, oh, Professor Smith, I look forward to your lecture at the conference. It has a very, very formal sound, and I believe that in our everyday lives, now I don't know you very well, Maybe you are in very formal situations like that. But it's got to be a very formal situation where you would use look forward to plus a one-time event just like that. Oh, yes, Mr. Tanaka, I look forward to our meeting tomorrow. Like, that's really, 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 really formal. Um... And I would guess that the most common way to use that would be ta -da, in writing. And you send a message to that client. Dear Mr. DiGiacomo, thank you for giving us the opportunity to meet on Thursday, June 7th to discuss our projects. Everyone in the department uh, on behalf of everyone on the department, we look forward to our meeting. That's really formal and in writing. But in casual, everyday English conversation, which I am a fan of, okay, <clears throat> if it's a usual event, use, I, I look forward to this class. I look forward to seeing you every week. Or, I'm looking forward to the party next weekend. I have heard look forward sounds formal, but looking forward doesn't. Um, so, again, 
I'm looking forward to the party. That's for a one-time event. Conversational English. I look forward to the weekend. I always look forward to the weekend, says my sister. Okay? That's conversational. But I look forward to our meeting tomorrow. Like you would never say that. If you have plans with your with a friend, you wouldn't say, oh, yeah, we're going to have a dinner at the Italian restaurant. Yeah, I look forward to it. It's not conversational. It's very formal to use look forward to for a one-time event, okay? And we do that usually in writing, not in speaking. So you, you have an email to a client. Dear Mr. Giacomo, thank you for your confirmation. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Yes, that is okay in writing in a formal situation, but not in conversational English. Do you say I am eager to, say, to see someone? Yeah. Yeah. But I think, I think look forward to is more conversation. Well, hmm? more, yeah, more conversational. Everybody cool? Okay. So it's not a question of look forward to is formal and looking forward to is casual. It depends on what it is. If it's an every day, every week, every month thing, use the simple present. If it's a one-time event, use the ING unless you're writing a formal letter. And I got to be honest with you, folks. These days, I don't know who's writing formal letters. Okay? The internet and text messaging has made things very informal these days, so. Cool? All right. Do, 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 do. Some of this, some of this, um, uh, you might have seen in other places. So this might be easy for you. I don't know. I hope, I, sorry for getting off track, but I usually say, I can't wait. Right, I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to go there. Right, I can't wait for the weekend. Yeah, that's fine. Same nuance. All right. Hope and wish. Sometimes uh, English learners have trouble with this. Hope. Okay. We use hope when it's possible. I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow because it's possible that it's not going to rain tomorrow. I hope the Yankees win the game because that's possible. A little bit. Um, I hope. You hope for something that's possible. What do you hope? What's your hope? I hope to travel again after the pandemic because it's possible, right? I hope to travel again soon. <sighs> Three years and five months I haven't traveled. <sighs> Is it possible to say I'm hoping? I'm hoping it doesn't rain tomorrow. Yes, that's fine. I wish I could fly to the moon. You're already on wish. I know you prepared beforehand, but I'd love to hear the explanation about sensitive, sensate, and sensible. I don't know sensate. Um, I'd have to. I'd have to look that up, uh, Moasser. I'll make a note of that, but I'll have to look it up. I can't give you an explanation now. Um, I'll look it up and then I'll, I'll mention that next time. Not your bad. Thank you. I hope I can improve my English skills. Right. I hope my singing would be well. I hope my singing will be well. If you talk about the future, it's will. 
sensational, yes. We'll talk about that next time. Um, sensational. You guys are sensational. I hope I can visit New York City soon. Me too. I hope to win the lottery, but only if I buy the ticket. <laughs> That's a good point, Avalon. I hope to hug soon my peeps from your city, but I have to wait till September. Right. I hope I will lose some weight and be slender. Me too. <sighs> hope I will pass my exams because it's possible. It's possible. Hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. That's right. So that's hope. What about wish, Michael? Hey, thanks for asking. Don't you remember the story of Aladdin and the magic lamp, or as some people call him, Arajin? Aladdin and the magic lamp. Aladdin is walking in the desert, and he sees the lamp, and he rubs the lamp, and the genie comes out. Oh! And the genie says, I will grant you three wishes. And Aladdin says, oh, that's cool, man. I wish to marry the princess. And so a wish is related to something that's impossible or something that's not likely to happen. That's why the genie can grant you three wishes. Because only a genie can give you what's impossible. Isn't that right, Aladdin? Yeah, man. That's true. So, I wish I had a million dollars right now. Is it possible for me to have a million dollars? Yes. But not likely. Not likely to happen soon. I wish I were taller. Is that, is, that, is that possible? Likely? No. If anything, I'm getting shorter. I wish I won the lottery and bought a house. Right. I wish. And by the way, we always say, I wish I were, I wish I were. If I were, I wish I were. If I were, I wish I were. If I were a rich man, right? That's, a, that's an old song from a Broadway show. Okay? So, you can hope for something that's possible, or you can wish for something that's either impossible or not likely. Now, a moment ago, our friend Tammy um, in Toronto said, I hope... No, no, no. What did you say? You said, you said, I wish, I wish, I wish, I... Maybe it wasn't... I wish I could fly to the moon. She said, well, it's not likely to happen in the near future, but the, um, you know, the companies that are producing space equipment like SpaceX and Virgin Space and Bezos are working on... Uh, um, Consumer travel to space and to the moon. So it's possible. Um, I wish I were rich. I wish I could speak English fluently. <clears throat> I hope I can speak English fluently. Think positive. I wish I could memorize 100 words a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I could memorize 100 kanji a day. <laughs> I wish I were a Hollywood star. Thanks, Toshi. I wish I was a president in my country. <laughs> no, you don't. That's a terrible life with a low salary. Now, oh, fab, thank you. Well, Michael, what about we wish you a Merry Christmas? Right. We use wish for holiday greetings. Okay. Okay. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Right? 
and a happy new year. Toshi, thank you so much. Appreciate that very much. So, I'd like to wish you a very happy birthday. You write that in the birthday card, right? So, we do use wish for a greeting. We don't say, I hope you have a happy birthday. I hope you have a Merry Christmas, we don't say, right? So, in addition to impossible things, like I wish I were taller, we do use wish when we talk about, um, we use wish when we talk, when we, when we greet somebody for a holiday, okay? I wish I lived in a luxury mansion. I, I meant I wish I were like the witch, I wish I were like the witch Samantha. That's hard to say. It's a tongue twister. I wish I could be beside you. Oh, that's so sweet. Mm. I wish I got rejuvenated in 20s. I wish I were a billionaire. Um, I always I always like positive thinking. So, I, I don't want to say I wish my Japanese language skills were better. I, I, I would just say I hope my Japanese language skills will, will be better soon. And it's the same thing with being a millionaire. I never like to say, I wish I were a millionaire. I say, I hope I'll be a millionaire soon. Sometimes a wish can be used as a noun, right? Right. What is your wish? What is your wish? Right? Um, peace and love, peace and love all over the world. That's my wish. Okay. Um, baby channel doing well. Thanks. How about you? How about you? All right. So that's hope and wish. Let's move ahead. Work on your dream. That's what I'm doing every day. Wish this is so height in French. Okay. Thank you. I wish, I would like to. Are they similar? Um, I would like to is a more polite form of I want to. I wish means I'm thinking about something that I want, but it's probably not possible or impossible. So, I wish I were taller. I would like to be taller. I don't know, I guess that, that makes sense. But there... The, um, you can say, in a restaurant, you can say, I would like to have a pizza, please. But you can't say, I wish to have a pizza. Okay? So if you're asking somebody for something, like in a restaurant, and you, you talk to the server, yes, I'd like to have um, the, um, the alligator nose Yes, the fried alligator nose. Yes, and um, what else? Oh, yes, and the sautéed pig ear. Yes, please. Yes, I would like that. Yes. Yes, I would like that without sauce. Thank you. So, I would like that means I want that. But you would never say to a server in a restaurant, oh, Yes, I wish to have the um, alligator nose, please. That's weird, okay? Um, if you're shopping in a store and you see behind the, the, the counter there's a, a red bag and a blue bag. Um, yes, I'd like to see the, I, I would like to see the, the blue bag, please. But you would never say, I wish to see the blue bag. So wishes for greetings and impossible dreams. That's right. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And I wish I were taller. Okay. Accident versus incident. An accident is physical. One thing hits another thing. That's an accident. If I drop my cup on the floor and it breaks, that's an accident. If I drive my car into the wall, that's an accident. There was a bad accident on the highway. <clears throat> Do 
You need to hold that knife carefully to avoid an accident. Okay? So an accident is a physical thing. For example, I wish... Um, baby channel, yes, but I wish to travel in France. It's wishes followed by a to verb. I wish to travel. But I wish to travel in France, if you say that, it means it, it's impossible for you or not likely for you. So in that case, I'd rather say I would like to travel in France because I want to. Okay. <laughs> Again, using wish is something that's either impossible or not likely to happen. Okay? Impossible or not likely to happen. That's wish. And somebody said to me, just I'll go back to here a second. Somebody said, oh, but Michael, um, I wish to have the uh, alligator nose. Is more polite. No, it's not. It's incorrect. <laughs> okay? If you want something, you want to order something, or you want, you know, um, you know, you're in the, in, the, in the shop and they sell pens. Oh, I would like to have the blue pen, you would say. I wish to have the blue pen. Just, it doesn't, it's not correct. Okay? So don't use that in a restaurant or a shop. Use I would like or I want, or can I, may I, but not wish. All right. So again, an accident is a physical happening. You need to hold that knife carefully to avoid an accident. Okay. I didn't do it on purpose. It was an accident. I'm so sorry. I hate it when I see a car accident all of a sudden in front of me. Right. An accident. Things crash. Okay? But an incident is a situation. We had a... I got sight of a car accident because of an opponent person. I'm not sure. I got a slight... Oh, I got a slight car accident because of an opponent... I don't know what you mean by an opponent person. Somebody who doesn't like you hit your car. Um, an incident is a situation. Oh, accident is French. Okay. An incident is a situation. Look at this example. I had a, we had a huge disagreement with our customer. The boss said he will handle this incident. Okay. Maybe in the business scene, you have a, some problem with a client. That's an incident. If two people, if two people are shouting at each other in the mall, that's an incident, okay? If the school calls, and if you have children, and the school calls, and the school says, hey, uh, your son didn't come to school today, and we found him smoking, you know, in the in the in the park that's an incident there was an incident at my apartment today several people were unable to use their electronic key to enter the building an incident is a happening okay so sometimes people use accident when they want to say incident right i had an accident with my boss what happened Oh, my boss was angry with me. That's not an accident. That's an incident. So an incident is a happening. It's a serious problem, right? It's a situation. It's a happening. Right, there are a lot of incidents, right? Sometimes in, in the workplace, there are problems. You have to fix the problem. That's an incident. Okay? But you can't use accident for that. An accident is a physical collision. Something, something hits another thing. Boom. That's an accident. Okay? But 
if you have a misunderstanding with your partner, then that's an incident. Oh, she's not talking to me. That's an incident. Okay? She told me that she loves another guy. That's an incident, not an accident. Thank you. Um, I always need to deal with some incidents when it comes to working. Yes, it's annoying when there is a train accident during my commute. A lot of these kind of incidents happen here a lot. The meeting, right, the meeting took place without major incidents. Right, 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 okay? No bad situations. Who said that? Ochan said a serious problem. Right, that's an incident, okay? So an accident is just uh, a physical collision. Two things, one thing hits something else, or two things hit each other. A head-on car accident. Tammy, a head-on car accident is the front of my car and the front of your car hit each other. That's head-on. Excuse me. All right. Everybody good there? I know there's a little bit of a delay here. I hope we don't have any incidents in this lesson. I switched to water. Today's lesson is brought to you by Poland Spring. No, it's not. Um, all right. What's next? Okay. Available. Oh, my God. Available versus convenient. Available versus convenient. What time are you available for a meeting? Oh, I'm available at 2 p.m. What time are you available for lunch tomorrow? Are you available? Are you available on Saturday? Hold on. Hang on. Hello? Hold on. Hello? Uh, yes, I'm available for an English lesson on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, I'm available. See you then. A person is available. Let me ask you a question. Uh, Svetlana, thanks. Let me ask you a question. You. Are you available next week at this time for an English lesson on YouTube? Hmm? 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 Are you available? Are you available? Are you available to talk now? I work in an airport and an incident is classified as an occurrence that could lead to an accident. Avalon, that's a good way to think about it. Yep. Are you available? Are you available for a lesson next week? Are you available at 9 a.m. New York time? Okay. But... A time or a place is convenient. What time is convenient for a meeting? I'm always available. I'm available for class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next Monday, you'll be out of town. All right. Have a, have a safe travel. Have a safe trip. Happy travels. Um, 2 p.m. is convenient for me. What time is convenient for you for lunch tomorrow? So why do I say this? Let's have lunch. Are you convenient tomorrow at one o'clock? After available, um, available at a time, are you available at a time, are you available tomorrow? Usually there's a time period after available. 
Okay? So you can say, is one o'clock tomorrow convenient? But please don't say, are you convenient? You can't say, oh, my boss is convenient tomorrow. Sorry, you mean in what situation are you asking that question? After available? Uh, Tammy, good question. A place is occupied, not a person. I'm sorry, I'm occupied. We can't say that. The, the room is occupied. The car was occupied when there was the accident. Okay? A place is occupied, not a person. Talking is, sorry, you mean, I, I, I don't understand the context of what you're asking. After available? Are you available for a meeting? Are you available for lunch? Are you available at 2 o'clock? Usually it's an event. Are you available to talk now? Oh, sorry, are you available to talk? Got it. Two. Available plus an, a, a two verb. Got it now. Okay. So does that make sense? A time or a place is convenient, not a person. And a place is occupied. A place is occupied. But it sounds weird. Are you convenient? People are not convenient. A smartphone is convenient. Okay. Not a person. Something is convenient. What time is convenient for dinner? 8 p.m. is convenient for me. Perfect. Stacy, thanks. Do you have the time? Now, now, Nauko said, what about work? So the word work, when you use it as a, to talk about a schedule, does 2 o'clock work for you? Does Thursday work for you? Yeah, that works. So the word work means convenient when you're talking about schedules. I'd like to have a YouTube lesson with you on Monday at this time. Does that work? Does that work means is that convenient for you? What's the difference between convenient and comfortable? Convenient is easy to use and good for me. Good, it's good for the time. The, the time is good. The place is good. Comfortable is like your sofa or your bed or your pillow. It feels good. Something that's comfortable feels good. All right, so Yumino, again, a person is available. Six o'clock at night is convenient to see you. I am available to see you six o'clock at night. But you can't say six o'clock at night is available. That's the point. A person is available. That's the pattern. You got to memorize the pattern. A person is available. A time or a place is convenient. A person is available. A time or a place is convenient. A person is available. A time or a place is convenient. A comfortable setting, a comfortable room. Right. I hope this lesson is comfortable for you. And I'm sorry that I'm picky about um, mistakes, but I'm here to help you. And remember, your last mistake is your best teacher. If you learn something wrong, you'll say it wrong forever. That's why I'm very picky. A person is available. Are you available? Yes, I'm available. Is six o'clock convenient? Yes, six o'clock is convenient. Do you have do you have time? Yes. Are you available? Right. And keep in mind, let's look at Tefo's example. Do you have time on Thursday? Means are you available on Thursday? Do you have the time means, what time is it? Oh, it's 1020. Available become accept. Yeah. Can you accept 
Well, I th I'm sorry, baby channel. I think available and accept is a little bit different. I accept that means I say yes to that. We learn from our mistakes. Yeah, don't worry about mistakes. Don't worry about mistakes. This is the place to make mistakes. No judgment here, okay? This is the place to make mistakes. We're all here to learn. All right. Hello, Bruno. Are you up for it? Right. Are you in the mood to do that? Of course you can join us. Although I can't read your name. Um, next. Challenge and try. First of all, challenge is a noun. By the way, if you've just joined us, if you've just joined us, and you'd like to get a copy of this document here, or any of the documents from live on YouTube, then you can go to myhappyenglish.com, which is my website, slash YouTube, and you can download that uh, document for free. There's a link, there's a link below this video in the description, but I'll put it here. How to pronounce would have like a native, woulda, woulda, woulda. I woulda gone. Thanks for being picky. Elena, you bet it. What place is convenient for you to have a meeting with us? The Starbucks close to my office is convenient for me. Perfect. Thanks, Stacy. Okay. Um, let's talk about challenge and try. Challenge is a noun, first of all. Something that tests your abilities is a challenge. Starting my own company was quite a challenge. Still is. It would be a challenge to climb that mountain in the winter. It's a challenge. Studying English is a challenge for me. Thanks, Tammy. It has been a challenge for me to sing without seeing the lyrics of the song. It has been a challenge. Something is a challenge. Something is a challenge. Something is a challenge. Not someone is a challenge. Something is a challenge. That's the pattern. Trying to remember all of this English is a challenge. Climbing the mountain in the winter is a challenge. What's a challenge for you? Studying English is a daily challenge. Good. Taking care of my two dogs, my 92-year-old mom, and running my business Happy English is a challenge. It's a challenge. Okay? So think about that meaning for a moment. As a verb, starting a new job is a challenge. That's right. As a verb, challenge means to invite a person to compete. Whoa. Sorry. To challenge a person. Challenge a person. Challenge a person. Challenge a person. I challenge you to a game of golf. Jack challenged me to a race on the beach. I'm going to say this again. Listen carefully. You challenge a person. A person challenges another person. Confront is aggressive. It's a challenge to maintain a healthy diet all the time. Challenge as a verb means to invite a person. A person. A person. I cannot tell you 
how many times how I hear people say something like this. Are you ready? Oh, uh, uh, Michael, uh, next week I'm going to challenge the TOEIC exam. You cannot challenge an exam. You can challenge a person. Yes, that's a very tall mountain. I will challenge that in the summer. <clears throat> you cannot challenge a thing. You challenge a person. He challenged me to the race of something. A friend of mine has recently challenged me to a game of chess. Right. I, can I say I dare you to do something difficult? Yes, that's fine. Okay. If you want to talk about something that is a challenge for you and you want a verb, please use try. I don't want to challenge anyone. Good. Thank you, Yumino. Try means to attempt to do something. I have never tried to climb a mountain. Next year, I'm going to try the TOEIC exam. I want to make a challenge to challenge you to speak English. Is it correct? Yes. Good example. Okay. You try something, you challenge a person. You challenge a person, you try something. Challenge a person, try something. Challenge a person, Try something. The next person that tells me, Oh, I'm going to challenge the TOEFL exam. The next person who says something like that is going to have to write me a five page essay. I challenge you to cook a carbonara, dear Michael. Yes, I know. I have to do that. Bruno, may I ask you a question? Yes, you may ask a question. Do we try a test? How, sir? Yes. I see it. We try a test. I'm going to try the TOEFL exam. I'm going to try taking, I'm going to try taking the, the IELTS. Challenge a person, try something. Challenge a person, try something. You have to remember that. You have to remember that because, because I hear that mistake all the time. All the time. All the time. It's incredible how often I hear that mistake. Um, okay. My God, that looks like we're out of time. Ay, 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 ay. How did that happen? So, if you um, if you want to uh, download this document, then go to myhappyenglish.com. Put that here. That didn't work. That didn't work either. Um, MyHappyEnglish.com slash YouTube. All right, there's a link below the, in the description of this video. You can download this document free. Of course, you need to put in your name and email address, um, but uh, you can get it for free, plus all of the PDFs since December. May you teach me how to pronounce the word two. Two sounds like ta. Let's go to the store. Let's go to work. Let's go to class. Ta. T-U-H. Ta. Ta, ta. ta. Attempt the test. You could say attempt, but usually we say try. I think I will never forget the phrase challenge a person. <laughs> Good. Good. All right. That, my friends, 
is just about all of the time we have for today to study English together. Could you try to cook a real perfect carbonara? Yes, I'm going to try that. Uh, Bruno, I'm going to try to cook. Hear that? I'm going to try to cook a real perfect carbonara. Linguini carbonara. Um, last week or two weeks ago, I made a osobuco. I don't know if I have a. I don't, have a, a, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I still have a picture of that. Um, yes, I do. Nope, that's a hambagu. Uh, osobuko, osobuko. If I can show this to you quickly, I'll show it to you. Do, 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 Tick, 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 tick. Too many photos. We take too many photos. Have you noticed that in life? Hmm. There it is. I made the osobuco. Osobuco is the veal shank. Um, the color is not good, thanks to my terrible camera. But, yep, that's what I cooked. Um, all right, anyway, that's all the time we have for today. Gee, I wish we had more time. So tomorrow, just so you know, hang on, let me go here. Tomorrow, um, uh, at, at this time, I'll be on Clubhouse. Tomorrow at 7.30 New York time, another uh, live lesson on Hello Talk. That's TOEIC Tuesday, the causative. And then on Friday, I'll be doing a live lesson um, on where? On Instagram. That's right. So that's that. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me for today's English lesson. Please remember to go to myhappyenglish dot, uh, myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube. You'll see a description. Uh, you'll see a link in the description uh, for that. And um, you can get a copy of the, down, of the document we studied today for free. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me for today's live English lesson. Sensible and sensitive. Yes, I got that. I made the note. Thank you. All right, see you next time. Have a great day. Have a great night. And keep in mind, learning another language is not easy, but it's not impossible. And I am here to help you on your journey. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you for everyone who sent a tip. I appreciate that. Thanks.